Okay, so now we're going to perform the Biuret test for protein. And note here that the way to make Biurets is sodium hydroxide with copper sulfate, but we're going to use a pre-made solution already. So instead of doing five drops of each of these, we're going to add just 10 drops of the Biuret into the urine. And we're going to use three milliliters of the urine uh, per test tube. We don't have to boil this one. We're just going to note the initial color and then we're going to note the end color. We are testing for the presence of protein. Testing for the presence of protein. We'll note that if there is protein present, the biuret solution will cause the urine to turn red. All right, so let's see what color everything is. Let's do the experiment. Okay, so again, We've got four tubes, one for each patient. And I'm going to add three milliliters of urine. So that's three pipettes worth, since each of these is a milliliter. And again, remember not to mix up your urine samples by mixing up your pipettes. We're doing three milliliters. Science isn't always fascinating to watch until something happens, right? So here we go. Now is a good time to run to the restroom or grab a snack, but you could hang out. Just shut your eyes and meditate for a moment. Or you can count, which you always want to do, and make sure your lab partner is not forgetting a step or getting the number of milliliters incorrect. All right, so now we've got all four tubes, and now we're going to add 10 drops of Biuret's to each. So you guys count for me. Shut this up here. Hmm. All right, here we go. Tenth, right? Ten. So as I feared, this Biuret is not good. It is not shelf stable. And so you can see that the portion which lends it color, the copper has probably precipitated out and now it's stuck to the inside of the bottle. So we're not gonna get anything off of this one and I'll have to do it. Let's see what's happening here anything's going on. I do see some change, so maybe that's good. We'll give that Biuret solution just another few seconds and see. Now 
not getting the nice green color that I wanted. However, I am getting a change in this urine. And so, because our materials were bad, we can't always predict that when we're getting ready to do an experiment, but I'll show you what I've got here. What I have are three fairly stable yellow color solutions here. And then number four, can you see how it's much cloudier than the other three? So the first three patients urine, although this one is just a little bit, number three is just a little bit uh, darker yellow. This fourth patient, this fourth patient's urine is definitely different. So we're getting a precipitate in that urine. All right, so there they are, all four of them different, uh, only in the fourth one. Right, so we could say that we're testing for the presence of protein, and in this situation, even though we didn't get that nice red color because of the quality of our material that we're using, we did get quite a change there, though. This one is definitely showing a precipitate falling out of solution. So we could say that there was a reaction there, but because it's not the right color, we can't say for sure that that's protein. <clears throat> but we could make a good surmise based on that big cloudy change. Okay? All right. We'll have to do that one again.